Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here today to bring you a live spirit chat, which is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered concerning your spiritual development, developing your spiritual path, working with your ancestors, <clears throat> working with your spirit guides, working with your guardian spirits practicing magic, developing your intuition, developing your psychic abilities, and all kinds of things related and in between. Hi Yaddy, thanks for joining. Hello. I'm going to take a moment to burn some Palo Santo. I've got a couple of things on my agenda to um, address and discuss, and then I will move on to taking your questions as always. I hope everyone's doing well. We have some nice weather here in Texas, in Austin, Texas. It is, it's like springtime right now. It's been really warm for a few days. <clears throat> we did finally get our wintertime cold snap. We had some days that were in the 20s and the 30s. Um, not, not the 20s, we haven't gotten down that far yet, but in the 30s. And now we're back to like 60s and 70s. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. I'm just taking a moment to get settled in and then I'm going to discuss a few things and then I am going to open it up to address your questions. If you haven't been here before, a live spirit chat is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and to ask questions related to your spiritual development, developing your spiritual path, developing your psychic abilities, your intuition, questions about meditation, questions about folk magic, working with ancestors, working with your spirit guides, working with your guardian spirits, doing dream work, divination, and all things related. If there's some background noise right now, it's because I live next to a school and this is the time when the parents all come to pick up the kids. So it gets a little bit um, loud sometimes. And like I said, it's a beautiful day, so I have the window open. Okay, so I did get some um, early submissions for questions. One question that I had was, how do I come into my power or how do I develop my powers? And what I would say to that is I need to know a little bit more about what specifically you're, de you're developing. Perhaps you're talking about um, your power related to practicing magic or your power related to um, being a witch. Perhaps you're talking about developing your psychic abilities, um, your spiritual gifts, things like that. So the thing is there's always a way to develop it. There's always a way to strengthen it. There's always a way to tune in deeper and to really get to know those abilities for yourself and really learn to use them and control them. But it's really important that in the beginning, the, the exercises and meditations and things that you do are targeted to the specific spiritual gift which is strongest for you or the specific type of intuition which is strongest for you. And then once you do some work developing that very specific gift or that very specific area of your intuition, then more than likely what almost always happens is other gifts start to develop along with that and it strengthens your abilities in, in all kinds of areas as a whole. So there's always a way to develop and become stronger and it's really important that you start with where you are now and start with what gifts or intuitions are really naturally the strongest for you. Hi Amy, nice to see you here, thanks for joining. <clears throat> so that was the first question I had and um, if the person who asked that question is joining today, please do feel free to elaborate on that and let me know a little bit more about what your gifts are or what areas that you are looking to develop and more than likely I can give you some really pointed uh, advice about how to get started with that. Um, the other question I had was someone was looking at my website and interested in a specific spiritual service 
and wanting to know more about that. Um, for those kinds of questions, it's always best to email me, inquiries at missmelinda.com. I accept free email consultations, so I really like to have a chance to discuss your situation with you and find out what's best for you and really the best way to approach your situation to maximize your success. So always really important to email me with those kinds of questions. <clears throat> Thanks for joining everyone. I see quite a few people here, maybe some new faces. For those of you who haven't joined our Spirit Chats before, this is a chance for you to participate in a live coaching session. To get your questions answered concerning developing your spiritual gifts, developing your intuition, developing your psychic abilities, developing your spiritual path, uh, strengthening your connection to the divine, strengthening your connection to your ancestors, your spirit guides, your guardian spirits, doing dream work, meditation, practicing folk magic, practicing divination, and all kinds of things related. Hi Colette, thanks for joining, nice to see you here. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is a little bit of money magic because in one of my prior live sessions recently I did have a question about what my favorite money ritual is. I don't really consider um, the work that I do or the kind of magic that I practice to be rituals, but um, when you're thinking about the definition of ritual in a broader sense of, of the the word, it is something that becomes a habit and becomes a part of your daily routine and something that you do or work on consistently. So in that sense, I do have a money ritual and I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. I've got a whole setup here, it's a little bit heavy, so let's see how, how I can show it to you. So this is my sweetening jar which is for me personally, which I have made for myself in my personal life and my business and all, you know, my whole life. Let me see if I can take it out of this bowl so you can see it a little bit clearer. So in this jar, I've got wax all over, um, you will see my business card and you will see coins. I've got lucky coins from all over the world from my travels and if we can see it, you might be able to see that. There's a tarot card in there and it's the sun card. I guess you can't see it very well, but maybe a little bit. So there's also some spirit money in here and quite a few other curios along with the traditional ingredients that you would use for any sweetening jar. So this is a honey jar. It has honey and syrup and it's generally designed for just sweetening my finances and also sweetening the energy of money to me, in other words, sweetening my relationship with money, my energy to money, and creating an energetic link that's based on sweetness, that's based on love, that's based on um, you know raising vibrations. So <clears throat> I burn a candle on this jar very regularly. I have a candle burning almost every day, especially every day that I'm working, because I do consider this to be a part of my um, my business health and my business management, right? Like managing my finances. This is something that allows me to focus in my intentions on my business management and my financial management each and every day. Every time I light this candle, every time I prepare a new candle for this jar, this is a prayer, this is a way for me to reaffirm my intentions. So that's one part of it is the sweetening jar. I have it on a whole set up. I'm not sure how well we're going to be able to see this. So there's a plate here that I have it on. I've got spirit money on this plate, right? I've got spirit money. I've got my own paper petitions. I have bills underneath here, bills that I'm working on paying off. I have um, all kinds of goals that I've written down for future financial goals. Um, so there's quite a few paper petitions. This is something that is designed to work on over time, designed to work on consistently, like I said, to reaffirm your intentions towards those goals and refocus yourself each and every day. 
<clears throat> and something I want to say about that is sometimes, many times, especially when it's something like this where finances are related to my overall life and there's something that I need to be working on managing all the time, it's better and more effective to be focusing on this for 5, 10, 15, or 20 minutes a day rather than doing like one huge um, spell or one huge ritual once a month. It's much better to be focusing on this on a consistent basis at small periods of time. So usually I have a charm bag on this plate, but it uh, it's in the wash. <laughs> so right now, um, some of the things that I keep on this plate are loose. So I'm gonna show you, like I was saying before, um, I've got a bunch of other lucky coins. These are coins mostly from Europe. And I usually have a charm bag that has these coins in them. And the charm bag usually also has some cash. And I don't usually keep a lot of cash around. It's just not a habit that I've gotten into. So I just use whatever I have around that I've acquired from like a local readings and things like that when I perform at events or I offer readings at events here in Austin. I typically get some cash and I typically put that in the charm bag and put that on the prosperity altar. I know that a lot of people like to work with really big bills. And my point is I, I usually don't because I usually don't have a lot of cash around and it's just as effective. So don't ever be daunted by that. Don't ever feel like you have to work with a bunch of $100 bills or you know things of that nature. Just start with what you have on hand and it will be just as effective. So I've also created a few little, um, these are like paper spells. I've created a packet that's sealed with wax that has my business cards and more paper petitions and intentions in there. I've got a business card wrapped in spirit money with some intentions written on that. I've got a cowrie shell. Cowrie shells were used as one of the first currencies in Africa. The, um, the tradition of, of using money or the invention of money came from Africa and one of the first things that were traded were shells. So cowrie shells represent abundance, they represent money, they represent prosperity. That's why I have that. I've also got a piece of pyrite. Pyrite is related to gold. Pyrite is great for success in money, business, finance. I've got this seed pod which is called a devil's claw. The, the reason that it's used for attracting things to you is because of these these little curling branches there. Those are are symbolic of hands or symbolic of drawing in, drawing things to you. So I've got my devil's claw. I also have an alligator hand or actually a crocodile. Crocodile claw. This was a gift. This probably wasn't something that I would buy on my own or acquire on my own, but this was a gift and I do use it with my prosperity setup and I do like having it. So these crocodile claws, see how it's curled in the same way that the, um, the devil's claw is? It's the same principle. It's used to draw things to you or pull things in and pull things to you. I've got some other small shells here and I've got some keys. Keys are really effective in magic. Keys are wonderful for unlocking your success. They represent the key to your success or the key to the spirit world, the key to magic. The, you know, it's what you need to unlock. It represents unlocking what needs to be unlocked in order to attain what you are seeking. And they're just, they're just lucky in general. And I really, I have an affinity for keys, so I have them all over the place. So that's my prosperity setup. I have the sweetening jar on top of the spirit money, on top of all of these paper petitions. Uh, like I said, I've got some bills and things stuck under there, things that I'm working on. And then I keep my charm bag next to it. And my charm bag has lucky coins, it has shells, and it has keys. And then these other things usually sit on top of the, the charm bag and around the jar. The cowrie shell that I mentioned, the Devil's Claw, the Pyrite, and the Crocodile Claw. So I hope that that helps to give you some ideas and some inspiration regarding your prosperity magic or your money magic or your um, rituals surrounding those areas of your life. 
as I said, I do like that to be something that is worked on consistently on a regular basis and in small periods of time to just help with reaffirming your intentions and keeping your mind focused on those goals rather than doing um, one or two big rituals or spells or just doing it sporadically. So now I'd like to open this up to your questions. Um, for those of you who maybe haven't joined, because I, I think I keep seeing new people entering as I'm speaking, our live spirit chats are, chats are a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered regarding developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual abilities, your spiritual connection, your psychic abilities, your intuition, um, developing your relationship with your ancestors, your spirit guides, your guardian spirits, doing dream work, doing divination, and practicing folk magic. So I'm happy to take your questions and to answer them to the best of my ability. <clears throat> and this month through my Patreon services, I am going to be offering a three-part video series on magic making and spell casting and in the first video I'm going to be discussing prosperity magic and money magic so you got a little bit of a preview of that here <clears throat> yeah ancestors can definitely communicate to you in different languages um, certainly especially depending upon your heritage from my experience, it's more likely that your ancestors are going to be communicating to you in a way that you can readily understand. Um, and then when you are getting spirits talking to you in other languages, it might be another kind of God or not, another kind of guide or another kind of, um, of spirit that is seeking your attention for some reason. So especially in the beginning when you're just developing that relationship with your ancestors, it's important to pay close attention and to be pretty vigilant and to really um, wait until you can discern what kind of a spirit or entity is trying to contact you. Um, because when you do start opening yourself up to, to creating connections with your ancestors and such, there will be other kinds of spirits that occasionally try to contact you as well. So um, if someone's talking to you in another language, you know, I would be a little bit careful about that because I do feel that usually your ancestors communicate with you in a language that you can understand and especially through the kinds of gifts or tools that you readily have available to you and you can understand through. So whatever way that your spiritual gifts are strongest for you, that's how your ancestors are going to communicate with you. And if you find that you're trying to make connection and you're having trouble because the way that they're communicating to you isn't something you can understand, then you can add a little clause to the end of your prayers. When you sit down and you do your gratitude prayers and you set your intentions and you let them know that your intention is to create that relationship and strengthen that relationship and create the communication and build the connection between the two of you, you will also want to add, please send your signs, messages, and your guidance in a way that I can understand on the human plane and in a way that I as an individual can understand. Yeah, I mean... If it's Spanish and you speak Spanish, then I don't, I don't think that it's a, um, it's that outlandish or that out of the, out of the question that your ancestors would be communicating to you in Spanish, and that makes total sense with your ancestry. But if it were a situation where you know, um, for instance, I had a spirit trying to communicate to me in Mandarin or what I think was Mandarin, I'm not positive, but it was a Chinese dialect. And, you know, I don't, as far as I know, I don't have any of that in my heritage. So, um, something like that where it's something way out of left field and really catches your attention. It's like, that may be something to pay attention to and probably is not an ancestor, probably is another kind of spirit. Um, but yeah, if you have diverse ancestry and they're speaking to you, they can definitely be speaking to you in their native language. Yeah, if there's some words you don't understand in Spanish, then, I mean, for you, it'll be easy for you to um, to decipher that, right? Like, you already know some Spanish and your family speaks Spanish, so it's not hard to, like, get back in the flow of it. And also, you have people around you that can help you decipher it. 
And the main point of this is that the spirits that are really close to you, specifically your ancestors or like your high level guides, they're going to speak to you in a way that is easy for you to figure out and understand, right? So, and I do think this falls into that category. How do I understand repeating numbers better? Well, that's a big question. Um, I would approach, approach that with numerology, but that's just from my perspective. Um, I know that repeating numbers and angel numbers and things like that are really popular right now. It's not really my forte, but I do enjoy numerology and I would suggest that you kind of go back to the basis and start studying some numerology from its basic foundation. Get to know the meanings of the individual numbers by themselves and then you can understand what the repeating numbers mean. Um, especially like triple numbers because basically what's happening is like if it's a triple one it's the meaning of that one tripled so it's just it's an it's a bigger message right I hope that helps let me know if you have any specific questions about that that I may be able to answer um, another way of looking at that is you know when we see those repeating numbers or those triple numbers it's an it's a affirmation it's an affirmation that we're on the right path it's an affirmation that our guides are there our angels are there they're looking out for us they're trying to get through to us they're sending us signs to be like yes I do hear your prayers yes I do see your work yes I am here I am protecting you I am guiding you so that's a really um kind of foundational way that you can also view it just an affirmation that they're there and that you're doing the right thing and that you're guided and that you have help you have protection and that you have guidance available to you if you are to seek it but as far as the individual numbers themselves i definitely recommend studying some numerology How do you talk to spirit guides or figure out their names? So the way that you are going to talk to your spirit guides and figure out their names is by using the gifts that are the strongest and that come the most naturally to you. So it works differently for everyone. Perhaps you are clairaudient, perhaps you hear voices, hear the voice in your head or receive the guidance through words and you can actually hear the guidance. The guidance. So that would be clairaudient. Perhaps you are visual, you see visions and pictures. So then you would be clairvoyant. Perhaps you most likely, you most often get your strongest messages in dreams. Perhaps you have a strong connection to feelings, so you are clairsentient or you are an empath, then you will receive your messages that way. So this is, with this I'm just talking about the way that you will receive the messages from them and communicate with them in the beginning. But as far as if you want to tell them specific things, then use your words, speak to them out loud, um, say prayers out loud to, to talk to them. And then the in as far as receiving from them goes, that's when you want to tune into those gifts or those intuitions that are strongest for you. And that's when you need to make sure that you can sit quietly, wait, pay attention, listen, give your space, yourself space and time to actually receive the messages and receive the guidance, right? That's, that's very important. And learning their names is going to take time. It's going to really depend on what kind of guides you're working with. There are a lot of different kinds of spirit guides that we can have. So it's going to depend upon that. And then it's going to depend on those other factors that I addressed. Um, one of the easiest and most powerful ways for a lot of people to connect with their guides and receive their names is through dream incubation. Setting an intention that you are going to meet your guides in your dream, sticking with that consistently for as long as it takes for you to do it, and then you know really actively manifesting that you're going to meet them in those dreams, waiting until you see them, and then asking them their name. That's um, one way that tends to be easy and powerful for a lot of people. What kind of questions are appropriate to ask ancestors to get to know them better? The first questions that are most appropriate are to ask them what they need from you. But first, you need to be making sure that you have um, a, a connection with your ancestors for sure. You need to know for sure that it is them and that you can trust them. Questions that are appropriate to ask them about getting to know them as individuals, getting to know them as, as people, are the same questions that you would ask any living family member or any friend. Um, you can ask them anything to get to know them. 
<clears throat> and if you really want to prove that it is your ancestors and you want to make sure that you have that strong and trusting relationship and foundation, then you could ask them questions about their past or their history that you will be able to um, affirm through your other family members or through your family history. Things that you don't yet know the answer to, but things that you know you can find out. That would be a great way. <clears throat> the numbers have been overwhelming for you, like you're just seeing them everywhere. Is that what you mean? I feel like animals come to me to give me messages. Does it have a name? I don't, it probably has a name. I don't know the name for that off the top of my head. And I'm imagining that you mean um, like real life animals in, in everyday life, like pets or other people's pets or like animals that you encounter in wildlife. And that's actually pretty common, but the thing is a lot of people aren't tuned into it or a lot of people aren't sensitive enough or observant enough to realize that they could be receiving messages that way, especially when it comes to receiving messages through, through nature, when you're in nature and animals are approaching you. And I'm sure that you know, it seems like you know that um, deciphering those meanings is going to depend upon the spiritual meaning of animals as well and kind of what they embody. You can use the doctrine of signs to a certain extent in order to determine that. Like things that are spiky could have um, reference to protection. Um, things that molt or shed can have reference to transformation. Things that hibernate can have reference towards going inward within yourself, so forth. But you can also study um, the principles of core shamanism in order to get better acquainted with the spiritual messages of animals. Um, it doesn't have a name, but what I'm picking up on is that you're just very sensitive to nature and you may also be very sensitive to the feelings and energies of people as well. You're probably just very sensitive energetically in that way. When we are those kinds of sensitive people, not only are other people attracted to our energy, but animals are often attracted to our energy as well. I think that's something that you should pay attention to. Perhaps you see it more in animals than in people because you really have a special connection with animals just as far as your personality is concerned. <clears throat> Wildlife animals approach me and just love it and I always look into what each animal represents to figure out the message. Yeah, that's very cool. That's cool, and we would call that a nature oracle. That's one thing that you could call it, and one way that you could look at it. Um, a nature oracle, an oracle is anything that is in your world, in your environment, that brings you messages. It could be something that you create, but most often it is something that comes from nature. So these animals are acting as a nature oracle to you, bringing you messages in that way. Your husband says you're an empath. Yeah, that makes total sense to me with the way that your gifts are working. Um, that's what I thought immediately as well. Is it common for one ancestor to come through stronger than the others? Yeah, it is common and that, that means that that ancestor may be a primary spirit guide for you. That may end up being your primary spirit guide or your primary ancestor. Also, when you work to develop, to continue developing your relationship with that primary ancestor, then it is likely that they are going to assist you with opening up other relationships to other ancestors and perhaps even assist you with opening up relationships to other kinds of guides, other kinds of spirits, entities, etc. That That ancestor can work as a kind of primary guide for you that assists you with your spiritual connection and your spiritual development as a whole. And if you're already experiencing a connection that, that's that strong and that's already developing and making itself so apparent to you, then you're probably at a stage and you I know I know you so I know that you've verified that this is an ancestor and that you do feel that you can trust her at this point um, then it's time for you to start moving on to asking her what she needs from you in terms of her spiritual evolution and her spiritual enlightenment 
Um, because when we're working on these relationships, it's not just about us, it's not just one-sided. We also need to be assisting them with their enlightenment and their spiritual evolution. So it's time for you to move on to that stage where you, you need to know what, what she needs from you, what's gonna um, help her with her spiritual evolution, and also what she needs from you so that the two of you can further work on developing your relationship and strengthening your connection together. I think you're ready to move on to that stage. Thanks everyone for joining. For those of you who haven't been here before, our live spirit chat is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered about developing your spiritual connection, developing your spiritual path, developing your psychic abilities, developing your intuition, uh, strengthening your relationship with your ancestors, your spirit guides, working with guardian spirits, guardian angels, um, doing dream work, doing divination, meditation, folk magic, and all kinds of things related. During my meditation at the altar, she mentioned rose quartz, so I put a rose quartz crystal there. Cool, very cool. How do I know who my guides are? <laughs> so that's a big question. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can approach this. First off, most important, know how you receive messages naturally. No, figure out, get in tune with yourself. Maybe you already have, have a meditation practice, have a spiritual practice of some sort so that you can be in tune with how spiritual messages and spiritual connection come to you the most naturally and the easiest. Once you do that, then you know how you are most likely to receive messages. Then you look, then you look for those messages because you're in tune with how you receive messages. Be open to them, be observant, be um, have faith and look for the messages. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree that I do feel like the guides come to you, but you need to understand how you're receiving those messages and you need to pay attention to those messages in order to be aware of them and in order to receive them because many we all have guides around us. And many people have no idea that they're receiving signs or they're receiving messages or their guides are trying to connect with them. So it's important for us to be aware of how our spiritual gifts and our spiritual connection works so that we can make the most uh, of that opportunity and make the most of our abilities to connect with them. Um, okay, so moving on from there, knowing how your gifts work, knowing how your intu intuition works or how your spiritual gifts work is the number one most important thing. Then you look for the messages and you know how to decipher the messages. Keep in mind that sometimes guides or spirits speak to us in symbolic spiritual language. So learning that spiritual language is going to be important, but they will speak to you in a language that is unique to you. So through signs and symbols that mean something to you, right? So look for signs and symbols, know how to interpret them, pay close attention to your guide, your dreams, play pay close attention to your intuition. Your intuition may be leading you um, in a direction that is going to more easily allow you to receive signs or strengthen that connection. And then if you are at a point where you want to actively work on a connection with your guides, you can always do that, right? There are lots of ways to, to do that and work on that connection. It really depends on what kind of guide that you are trying to make a connection with and it really depends on how your gifts work for you and how you are receiving messages. Oh, so someone is saying, you have helped me in ways you cannot imagine, thank you. Rafa Tatsuya, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, so I apologize, but you are so welcome. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Okay, great. So your dreams are where you get your most insight. So maybe you were here earlier when I was talking about dream incubation. Dream incubation is going to be a really powerful tool for you to make a stronger connection with these guides. So you don't have to get elaborate with this, but if you want to, you can put a candle beside your bed, you can get a dream journal, you can put a, you know, your journal and a pen beside your bed, and every night before you, bed, you, before you go to bed, you take a few moments, do a really simple meditation, like even just focusing on your breath for five minutes or two minutes or whatever, 
and then set your intention that tonight I am going to meet my guides in my dreams. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to get their names or I'm going to receive messages from them or whatever. I'm going to meet them. Light your candle before you do it. Put your candle out before you go to sleep. You can look at this as communicating with your subconscious minds, or you can look at this as communicating with your higher power, or you can look at this as communicating with your guide, whatever works for you. I will say that communicating with our subconscious mind directly before going to sleep at night is a really powerful way to get things done. So do that every night and do it for as long as it takes. Even people who are really skilled and really experienced shamans, sometimes it takes them six months to receive the kind of experience or the kind of dream or the kind of answer that they're looking for in their dream. So have patience, have perseverance, have faith. Do this every night. First set your intentions that you're going to make connection with those guides. Then right before you go to sleep, Repeat to yourself like, I am going to remember my dreams in the morning. I'm going to remember and understand my dream with clarity. And just keep repeating that and then you will get to a point where you can actually, um, you will have the dreams that you want to have, you'll make the connections that you want to have in your dreams and you'll be able to take it from there to um, strengthen those experiences, to strengthen the communication with the guide, to learn what the guide's name is and to really um, develop that relationship. Yeah, and then journal it in the morning. If you want to go, you know, if you want to take these extra steps or go the extra mile, then journal this in the morning so that you can remember those dreams. And even if you, all you remember is one feeling or one tiny snippet or like a glimpse of an image, as soon as you start writing it down, you are very likely to start remembering the whole thing and it will just come flooding back to you. And then you have that for for later reference, which is really important because going back and looking at the signs that you received in your dream and how your, your life played out in relation to those signs or messages is going to be really important for you for affirming that your path is unfolding and that you are indeed receiving guidance that is helpful for you. Hi, hi from France. Thanks for joining. How did I feel about the solar eclipse energy? Intense. I felt very intense and I am still feeling very intense, emotional. Um, definitely things from the past coming up showing me, hey, this stuff still needs attention. This is where you have some work to do, etc. So yeah, it's been intense. It's been revealing. It's been very emotional. Um, yeah, that's what I'll say about that. I like how you find the time to answer everyone's message. I would like to ask you something, but I'm a bit shy. Well, you know, if you don't want to make it super personal, you can always kind of cloak it and make it a general question. Um, but if you really need some, you know, a little bit more insight, then you can shoot me an, in, an email, inquiries at missmelinda.com. I offer free email consultations. Um, I can answer some simple questions there, kind of on a base foundational level. I won't go too deep um, in the email consultations, but I do also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. But go ahead, go ahead and give me your question. Just, you know, don't give away too many personal details and no one will know. Good, I'm glad you're gonna do the dream journal. Yeah, Mexican anneal. So the question is, have you used anneal and if so, do you feel, how do you feel about its magical properties? So I do use Mexican anneal quite frequently. Um, I love its magical properties. A little bit of history for you is from the Tureg, Tureg or Turag people of Northern Africa. And in that area, they used to cover their bodies in indigo and use it as a, um, as a ritual experience, as a, as a um, ritual of ecstatic, a spiritual connection, ecstatic divine connection. And the reason that they use it is because it works for protection as well as for amplifying spiritual energy. So not only are you increasing and strengthening your spiritual connection and amplifying spiritual energy while you are using it, it is always wor also working to protect you. Um, I find it to be really beautiful for cleansings, and I use it in a lot of different ways. I use blue water. Blue water is um, traditional for spiritualists. 
it works in the very much the same way I was just describing. It's cleansing as well as enhancing connection. So it's traditional to just leave uh, cups or saucers or bowls of blue water out to assist with that protection as well as enhancements at all times. And you can also use the blue water for scrying. Um, you can use it for asperging, which means flicking it around your environment for cleansing and connection. Um, I use it in a lot of healing work for clients. Sometimes I will surround a candle with the blue water um, to use for healing. I still feel like the psychic messages I get are scrambled. I get a portion correct, but a portion incorrect. But I feel like I'm almost there, but just not quite yet. I'm frustrated, but determined. Well, that sounds really normal. Um, it's pretty rare that everything comes through to you uh, crystal clear. It's like, if you're getting if you're getting one message, you're getting that message, so that's great. But if there's additional details attached to it and that's not clear to you, then just don't worry about that. Just let it go. Um, if you spend your time instead focusing on the part that is really clear and focusing on, on the things that you do get, then you're going to continue to strengthen. But if you keep trying to um, figure out the stuff that isn't clear to you, it's a little bit, it's kind of a waste of energy because you are getting clear stuff. So instead, focus on what is clear to you and focus on developing your gifts instead of understanding the information. Focusing on understanding and analyzing the information is more of a um, and more of a like more of a right-brained, practical brain sort of thing. Whereas focusing on developing your gifts, developing your connection, that's what's actually going to strengthen these kinds of messages. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad that's helpful for you. You're welcome. Okay, so anyone have any more questions? I'm not sure what time it is, but we probably don't have that much more time left. I'm sure that I've probably been on about 40, 45 minutes or so at this point. For those of you who haven't been here before, the live spirit chat is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered concerning developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual connection, developing your relationship with your guides and your ancestors, um, working at your altar, doing dream work, working with guardian angels, guardian spirits, practicing folk magic, meditation, dream work, divination, and all kinds of things related. So go ahead and ask me your questions if you have them. I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. I go live once a week, but it's not on the same day. Um, my schedule fluctuates from week to week. And so I, I do it on the day that I am available to do it. I usually announce it at least a couple of days beforehand. So if you pay attention to my story, my IG story, I usually have it posted up there when I'm going to go live once a week. I, I miss a week here and there, but mostly once a week. How do I personally meditate? It fluctuates all of the time, depending on what's going on with me, depending on what I'm focusing on, depending on how my daily routine is going, what's going on in my personal life, um, etc. Right now, at this moment, I'm doing a very, very simple meditation with um, no props, no no guided recording, no um, binaural beats, no no outside props, just me, myself, and I, and I'm just. I take a moment to just do some deep breathing in through my nose and out through my mouth and just kind of relax my body. And then I'm just centering myself. I'm just um, going inward and focusing on feeling a strong center within myself, feeling myself just strong and centered right in the middle of myself inward. And just focusing on how I always have this strong center to go to and that I always have this inner voice and this higher self and this spiritual connection to go to and just focusing on reinforcing that that this is always available to me in my daily life, that I am centered, that I am connected, that I have 
inner wisdom and that I can always rely on that. I and mean, it's just kind of, um, there's actually not that much thinking involved. I'm just trying to describe it to you, but really when I'm doing it, I'm just focusing on feeling centered. And everything I'm describing to you is why I'm focusing on, just on, on uh, feeling centered. Yeah, ancestors and guides will assist when doing tarot readings, especially if you set the intention that you would like to. Um, in some traditions, like in Espiritismo, they have uh, what's called a gitana, and this is not a politically correct word, but in, in those traditions, they still call it a gypsy. So there are gypsy spirits, and they are ones that are known to assist with things like card readings. Uh, maybe... Uh, people can come up with a better name, but the thing is they're not they're not spirits of Romani descent They're spirits um, of northern African descent um, Throughout time and history and throughout different traditions the idea of what a, a Gypsy is it varies quite largely, but anyway in some traditions There are specific spirits that help with that sort of thing and then as far as like personal practice goes if you have that connection and you set the intention and you feel that they are capable of helping you, then yes, they certainly will. I would put one clause in there. Um, don't expect your ancestors to do stuff that they, that are not, like that weren't part of their personality when they were alive. Um, yes, it is very possible that they have evolved since then and they've learned other things and now that they are a spiritual entity and not a human entity, they carry with them the experiences of multiple lifetimes. So yes, other things are possible. However, um, it's still not that likely that they are going to specialize in things that are not, you know, outside of their primary personality. Especially if they're representing themselves to you as this ancestor, then <clears throat> that's how you need to relate to them, if that makes sense. So, you know, your uncle, your great uncle who is a mechanic, he's probably not going to be interested in helping you with your card readings. Um, but if you had a grandma who was a witch and did card readings, then yeah, she's probably going to want to help you. Yadi says, turn on post notifications to know when I'm going to go live. When doing candle work, when you put the candle out due to having to leave the house, does that slow down the energy work? I mean, it pauses it, but it doesn't really, it doesn't slow down the metaphysical or the spiritual energy because that stuff takes time to manifest anyway. So... Um, even when, you know, when it's off or, or out, it's still working on the spiritual level, on the metaphysical plane, just like it continues to do after it's fully extinguished and the, the working or the spell is totally complete. It's the same thing. It's still working on the spiritual plane or the metaphysical plane, taking time to, to completely manifest and take shape. So it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop it in that sense. You're welcome. I'm glad it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, um, we can talk about that, Yeti. We can talk about that more. Maybe if you have um, spirit guides that can help you with that. That's something that that's something that you don't want to push. That's something that you don't jump into. That's something that will make itself known over time if it's there. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to connect with you as well. We've had some great questions today, everybody. I've been really enjoying taking your questions. I've been really enjoying our conversation. And I really appreciate you all being here. I appreciate your questions. And I appreciate your, your, the thought that you're putting into this. I think I'll probably bring it to a close if there aren't any other questions. Um, as I said, I do really appreciate your, your interaction. I really enjoy this. And I do go live once a week. And I will be happy to connect with you again. So in the meantime, everybody take care. Happy Monday. Have a great week. And stay blessed. Hi. Hi, Witch Luna. I was just getting ready to log off. Thank you for joining, though. Thanks, everyone. Stay blessed.